So with that, I'm very excited to take a moment to talk about some of the new and upcoming features of Terraform 013. The first one I want to spend some time talking about is module counts. These have long, long been asked for within Terraform. Forever, we've been able to, within Terraform, use a count attribute on a resource to allow Terraform to automatically add more of that resource. So for example, we might define a VM and say count is equal to 5, and Terraform will create 5 VMs with an identical configuration. Now that same count parameter can actually be applied to a module. A module might consist of tens or hundreds of sub-resources or sub-modules as well, but Terraform can clone and provide multiple instances of that entire module and all of the sub-resources now. So you might have a simplistic use case like we've outlined in this example, where maybe I want to create a, a, a blob bucket in multiple different environments, production, development, QA, et cetera. I can define a list of these environments that I want and then have the count of the module that sets up that bucket be dependent on my list. So now instead of having to copy paste resources if I want a new environment, I can simply add a new environment, maybe call it Armon test, and then a new Terraform module will be created matching that name, making it much more easy, much more flexible. In that same vein, we're also adding support for the for each expression on top of modules as well. So while count might enable us to do relatively simplistic expansion into multiple counts of modules, the for each allows for more complex logic. Maybe we have a key value mapping of things, or we need some logic being applied depending on which instance it is, and the for each gives us that flexibility and that power. So in this case, we might be setting up a set of resource groups in different regions, and so we can create a mapping that has the different key value pairs of how we want to apply it, and then do a for each over the module and deploy a Kubernetes cluster within each of those resource groups. The next one is the ability to express a depends on construct with a module as well. So much like resources, generally Terraform is smart enough to implicitly figure out dependencies. Based on your referencing of one thing onto another, Terraform will figure out what is the correct order to create things. That's the right approach 99% of the time because Terraform can implicitly figure out the dependencies. But 1% of the time, we need to be more explicit. We need to tell Terraform this thing must be done first before these other actions will be able to be successful. And so while we could do that at a resource level, it wasn't available at a granularity of a module, and now is with Terraform 013. So in this example, what we might need to do is deploy a load balancer and make sure that comes up successfully before we define a set of compute instances that get deployed behind that load balancer. So now we can just use that and explicitly say we have a depend on relationship. Terraform will make sure that comes up before anything within the module gets instantiated. The next big focus continues to be collaboration and how do we make this easier? While we have Terraform Cloud in the free tier, one thing we've done with this latest release is have a native login experience as well. So from the Terraform CLI, we can issue a Terraform login. This will redirect us and do the authentication within Terraform Cloud. And then once we have a token generated that lets us authenticate, that will kick us back into the CLI where we can continue with whatever operation we were doing. The next big set of focus has been the ecosystem, right? And so specifically in this case has been looking at how do we make it easier for providers uh, to scale, right? And so one piece of this has been moving providers uh, into the Terraform registry. So where the registry started as a place to publicly host modules, it now also holds the providers and provides version documentation and makes it more accessible to see what are the different providers available. One of the things we're introducing is a first class notion of namespaces. So now you might have an official provider at, for example, HashiCorp slash AWS, but this gives us a namespace in which other providers can now exist. So one of the things this enables, for example, is other external private module registries, right? So if you're using Terraform Enterprise on-premise as an example, you could have a different registry internally hosting a custom provider. So maybe you've forked an upstream resource provider and added custom definitions, or you've developed an in-house uh, provider for resources that are an API that exists internal to your organization. You can now create that provider, upload it to the registry, and seamlessly point to it using a private endpoint. Within the public registry, we can now use these different namespaces to have different communities, members, as well as ISV partners publish their own provider. So now you might say, great, I have this provider. I'm going to fork it from the upstream, add some resources, and host it in my own private namespace or for my internal organization, and put it within your own namespace of providers. And you get all the same benefits of being able to do version pinning, discovery. It's all integrated as part of Terraform init command. So you get the same seamless experience that an official provider would get as well. We've already shared some of these in early preview with the community, and it's been awesome to see the early feedback. I think people are really excited. Anyone who has either written a custom provider or needed to fork an upstream provider and modified it 
is really going to find that these features make it much easier, much more streamlined to actually navigate Terraform providers. So very excited to see what the community actually does with this, with uh, the, the new features. Everything that we just talked about is now available as Terraform 0.13. The beta of that is now available today. 